All right, it's the appreciator appreciating again for all of you who are trying to escape the crankiness, the uh, adversarial approach to uh, broadcast. Yeah, I'm here to just, we're here for fun and uh, to enjoy life. And no, we're not some Pollyanna uh, positive thinking nonsense. We're just uh, not dwelling on the crap that we can't do anything about that just is a provocation and uh well this here's something that some people are finding a provocation that i appreciate and think is extraordinarily cool um most of you uh superhero fans superhero movie fans remember i don't know it's got to be 10 years ago or a little less when uh, they announced they were going to make a superman movie with Nick Cage as Superman. Now, th- that I found that to be mind-blowing back then. And yeah, everybody else was freaking, Nick Cage, what are they, crazy? And uh, well, uh, recently, Henry Cavill, who's been playing Superman in the DCU films, um, was discharged. They told him he wasn't going to do any more. I'm not sure how that went down because uh, I I don't delve. I just I, <laughs> it, I I was he was good, but he, he wasn't my super. He wasn't George Reeves. He wasn't Christopher Reeve. He was just another guy they stuck in the suit who was okay. I mean, I saw him in the Justice League film, and it was it was fine. I'm I I that I don't think he was bad or anything, um, but that. Nick Cage supposedly is going to be Superman for real this time. And uh, I think that that makes me very happy, even though um, it was on a YouTube video and everybody in the comments was just having a cow or something. No, no, no. Nick Cage is fabulous. Nick Cage is one of our true heroes of film. Uh, I love actors that are that total ham, over-the-top, scenery-chewing actors, and he is a hero. Um, I don't know how many of you have (laughs) seen his recent film, uh, Renfield, but I heartily recommend it. Even if you're not a big Nick Cage fan, uh, he plays Dracula, and it's so good. It, and this, you know, usually he's in these B movies that might be marginal, and uh, generally he's the only good thing in it. This is a pretty good movie to begin with, and Nick Cage as Dracula is just so good, so amazing, even better than uh, I don't know how many of you have seen another one of my favorites of his, Vampire's Kiss, where he plays a guy who at least thinks. He's become a vampire. Just, oh, I, I, I love the guy's acting. I love his attitude. Um, I first saw Nick Cage in a David Lynch film, um, Wild at Heart, which he was just great in that with Laura Dern and uh, just a fabulous film. And maybe for repeat viewing, my favorite or close to David Lynch film. That was just... I saw it in the theater when it first came out, and he had the whole, my snakeskin jacket. Oh, he was just so good in that. And um, uh, Raising Arizona's pretty good with uh, Nick Cage. Uh, a great actor. We can give him a five-star rating. E- even when he's in a crappy movie that I can't even remember the title of, uh, it's worth having seen it just for having seen Nick Cage be Nick Cage. Um, I I think he is one of the best of all time, and certainly in the top five actors. Yes, I refer to male acting people as actors and female acting people as actresses still. Uh, I'm an old man. I, I'm not politically incorrect. I'm not trying to insult anybody or be sexist or whatever. It, it is an important difference. And I notice they still have those categories at the Oscars, even though they're run by woke people. So uh, just look, I, I like the idea of equality. 
Uh, but it, it's, it can be too much. I don't know. And if you disagree with me, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings. And that, look, we're here for the fun. We are not here to offend anybody, to um, start some vendettas or no. And um, speaking, I, I got a treat and a surprise Um I have been trying to address for years now. Uh, we had a guy on the channel who was, he was a really good friend of mine and he passed on uh, on us in about, what, 2018, 2019. He started off just as a fan. Then he was doing segments for the show I was doing at the time, the Pop Culture QD, one of the number of series that I have done on the Overnight Scape Underground, and they're all archived. I mean, if you can't get enough of PQ River, believe me, there's more than you could possibly tolerate. Uh, archived both on onsug.com, or if you go to uh, archive.org and search in their little search box, PQ River Onsug. Uh, there's it's just so much. Uh, I, even I couldn't possibly uh, envisage listening to it all. But uh, I don't know. Someday maybe the AI can just uh, take all those in and then uh, produce new podcasts. After I'm gone, I can live on in AI form because they, they got enough of me, let me tell you. But uh, Jimbo uh, was a great friend and a broadcaster on the Overnight Scape Underground. And um, on the 29th, he did a series called Hey Everybody, It's Jimbo, which was very popular in its day. And um, I figured I would take an excerpt from a show. This is one of his earliest episodes, I think episode six of Hey Everybody, It's Jimbo, uh, from almost... uh, Let's see, uh, six years, seven years to the day uh, of today. Uh, This is from uh, May 29th, 2015. And without further ado, uh, this is just a basic sample. This isn't like the best of or some clip handpicked because it's incredible. And if you like Jimbo, the same thing goes. You go over to archive.org, you search Ansug, Jimbo, and and he, uh, thank goodness, while he was here, he was generous with his time and recorded a bunch of very cool internet shows. And uh, here is uh, a piece of one of them for us to listen to together. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's a Jimbo. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Jimbo. This is number six on the Hey, Everybody, it's Jimbo show. Number six. Number six. You don't want to say number six more than twice. You don't want to say it three times and conjure up all kinds of skeletons and I don't know what happens. But uh, I have absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing planned <laughs> nothing is written down, nothing is planned. I have nothing on me my agenda. I had nothing happen to me probably since I talked to you. Just nothing going on. What's Jimbo going to talk about? He's looking around the room trying to find something to talk about. No, I was thinking about, you know, I don't really need it, but I was thinking about maybe I needed some money. I mean, you know, what if I need some money? I'm, I'm washing my hands with Germic. You hear this? I'm not drinking the Germex. I'm simply washing my hands, but uh, killing germs. Die, germs, die. You stupid germs, I got you. <laughs> hey, what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about raising some money. I was thinking, now how can I quickly raise some money? And the first thing that came to my mind was to kidnap somebody. That was the first thing. And then I scratched that one off my lips, and then I said, human trafficking. Uh, Human trafficking, that would be the one I would choose, I think. Uh, Not really. How about go get a job somewhere? Uh, Do some labor, do something. uh, Do something productive with your life. You know, I am disabled, and so uh, 
You know, you can throw your stones at me if you wish, but I will deflect them with my government check. I'm sorry, I just have a government. I have a government check. I get money from the government. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. I just do. I do. And I'm, I'm happy that I do because otherwise I'd be dead. I'd be dead, ladies and gentlemen. There's no doubt about it. I would be dead. Or living in my sister's garage. In her garage. Right out there with the car. Like, please don't back up yet. I haven't woken up yet. Please, let me get this exhaust out of my bald spot. Uh, hey, wait a, wait a minute. I hit my head on the fender and uh, it's not going to be a good day. Last time I hit my head on the fender. Hit my head on the Stratocaster. <laughs> Anyway, hit my head on the squire. I remember Frank, <laughs> I, heard a, I heard a story of Frank's, he was talking about he had a Stratocaster in his, uh, he didn't have no Stratocaster, he had a squire. He had a squire as, as far from a Stratocaster as you can get. As far, Frank, as far as you can get, sir. Sorry, he didn't fool me with that Stratocaster squire baloney. No, a Stratocaster. Mm. I mean, a Squire is a <laughs> 50 football fields away from a Telecaster, for goodness sakes. A Squire is like a like a couple of beavers went out there and sawed off a guitar and put some strings on it. I get a Squire. I mean, that's not to say that your Squire, I'm not, I mean, I'm glad you got the Squire and I'm glad you learned a couple of chords on it. But, you know, I mean, you can't compare a Squire to a Stratocaster. They look exactly alike, but that doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. There are these things that they're called pickups and stuff. and Engineers. You ever heard of that? Engineers. I'm an engineer. I know how to make a guitar. I'm going to make a Squire. I'm going to make a Squire guitar instead of a Stratocaster because I'm a boob. <laughs> just, I mean, they're just like night and day. Seriously. It's ridiculous how different they are. <laughs> you know, my, these dogs that are around here, you, you heard me talk about the big dog and the little dog, and I love them to death, and these dogs are awesome. But uh, they love Parmesan cheese. I had some leftover spaghetti today, and uh, I, uh, I thought, I bet you they like this cheese, so I, I just shook some cheese on the ground, and boy, they just went at it like it was uh, stuff to kill ants and stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. I like that. It's what, it's what it reminds me. You know, you ever killed ants with that ant powder stuff, and the, and you pour it on the ant, ant bed, and, it, and it's white, like Parmesan cheese. It looks exactly the same. I wonder what happens if you put Parmesan cheese on an ant farm. They'd probably go crazy. Like, yeah, check this out. We're getting free cheese. And then the next day, you go out there and you put the ant stuff on there that kills them. And they're like, yeah, we got free cheese. And then they take the stuff down there and they all die. They all die. And they do that anyway, even if you hadn't put the Parmesan out there. But it's kind of it's like, a, it's kind of like a, just a revenge, you know? I mean, because they're in there like, you you really got them thinking they got something good. And they go down in their whole hole and... Yeah, no, this is getting ridiculous, so let's stop. Let's stop that line. It's really, really warm today. Mm. I think it's 144 degrees outside. It's gross outside. No, 144 is kind of a magical number, isn't it? It's like, I don't know, 132 is like that. Frank says 209 is like that. I, I say 144 is much more magical, and, um, what did I say, uh, let's see, you got, like, 24, 36, say it, hut, 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 hey, hey, face, like, it's on the deep, it's a long bomb, and it's incomplete, 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 you thought I was gonna say touchdown, but no, I fooled you, I fooled you. I fooled you. 
won't be fooled again. <laughs> that, that. Anyway. <laughs> oh, wah, 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 wah. There's some corn chips. Survivor Man and the corn chips. Remember that one? Yeah, remember that all time classic? Yeah, oh, good not. Look what I'm doing over here. <laughs> you ever buy electronics and they give you those uh, super good, like, bread twist ties? Man, I love those things. I've got, like, a jar of them. I don't really ever use them for anything, but I would never throw them away. They just sit in there. And <laughs> I don't really know what I have them for, but I'm thinking one day I'm going to use these. For something, the pocket laps. Grab the, grab the bag of pork and beans and the, the little plastic thing of twist ties. I mean, I just wouldn't be without them during apocalypse. But they say the apocalypse. And yeah, we had a mutual appreciation thing going, and and I'm I I, I intend on doing more on the appreciator uh, segments of Jimbo. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be a little more hand-picky maybe as we go along. Or I'll continue to be random and fun because, uh, yeah, that, that, I don't think Jimbo ever did anything that was uh, boring or uh, worth skipping over. Uh, he was just such a personality. And uh, yeah, the, the mutual appreciation was great. And his favorite thing... I think in the world was the old time radio show Vic and Sade. And uh, we did a bunch, and he did with other broadcasters, a whole series of the Vic and Sade cast. And if you are looking for a really unique old time radio show with some amazing quirky humor, uh, you can probably just listen to Vic and Sade, but uh, appreciating it along with Jimbo just adds, and his commentary before and after adds so much. And uh, yeah, he really loved that show. And uh, yeah, th I am so glad that uh, he has preserved uh, the, the, the miracle of the overnight scape underground. I cannot uh, overemphasize how great that it is and speaking of old time radio i can recommend a show um from here and that is gunsmoke it's one of the later uh old time radio shows and maybe some of you have heard of the tv show but before it was on tv it was a radio program and quite popular in a quote-unquote adult western as opposed to like the lone ranger um great sound effects great music and bill conrad uh played matt dillon uh he didn't get the tv role that went to james arnass because they felt conrad was a little short and pudgy uh, but he did canon later on i don't know if you 70s tv appreciators remember that show but yeah, he was the older, fat, pudgy detective in the day when they had a million detective shows. And it was the detective in the wheelchair, Raymond Burr as Ironside, uh, the husband-wife detectives with Macmillan and wife, with Rock Hudson and Susan St. James, uh, the wise-ass, clever detective with Peter Falk as Columbo. Uh, there was a, just a plethora of uh and the old uh like senior citizen detective barnaby jones just bunches of those and they were all very great and uh certainly again worth your time to check out um because you would appreciate it i bet you i bet you and uh let's see continuing the appreciation uh without going uh, too crazy here um there is, a, here's a YouTube channel for you music lovers who like uh, popular music, I guess you would call it. There is a fellow who calls himself the 45 Professor, and he does these playlists that are amazing. He will take uh, a year or a theme and just put together these uh, year by year. Uh, and he, I believe the audio, 
may or may not be off of the 45s, but he always has a picture of the original 45 and old 45. Just the labels, some of them, are these remarkable pieces of vintage graphics. Uh, I was listening to his 1958 uh, alphabetical singles list, and it was just amazing hearing these songs and placing them in my head in the chronology they go because some of those 1958 songs I'd have sworn they were from the 60s that they were later than 1958 and of course that was an era of doo-wop so there's a lot of that I mean I and uh, apparently Frank Zappa was a huge fan of the doo-wop music which is surprising because I don't know he tended to compose and perform far more complicated stuff. And doo-wop is just so pure and basic and uh, simple. But yeah, that 45 professor, that is absolutely something worth you checking out. Um, I, I, I heartily heartily recommend that uh, channel on YouTube. And yeah, we will continue to uh, recommend cool uh, channels. And uh, it, it, uh, while we are on the topic of music, I wanted to recommend, um, well, you've probably heard of them, but maybe you don't get how important they were. Um, back in the early 70s, uh, there weren't bands really using synthesizers or electronica. And uh, there was a band that started more as a experimental band in the genre of uh, what they call kraut rock uh german um they it, it was a real concept music that tended to have a really steady beat a real solid sound a lot of repetition kind of a groove um and this is what led to techno and electronica and the band that was the biggest in case you don't realize by now who I'm talking about was Kraftwerk and founded and throughout the good part of their history uh, led by Rolf Hooter and Florian Schneider who has since passed on Hooter remains and has toured without uh, Schneider he left the band um, I think in the mid 2000s retired uh, the He'd had enough, and he only came out with one single after that, a song about um, pollution or something that he did just to promote uh, people not polluting the oceans or something. But if you search Florian Schneider on YouTube, you can hear that one. But the band Kraftwerk started as um, using acoustic instruments like flutes and guitars and real drums along with electronica. And uh, they had their first hit, Autobahn, which is basically all electronica. But when they came out in 1975 with their Radioactivity album, I, I was there. I bought it when it first came out, and that album just blew my mind, my young, early teen mind was completely just... and. It, I played it to some people, you know, I, I had a tendency to do that, and some liked it, some didn't, but it was their next album that still stands today as the beginning of EDM, electric dance music, and techno, and all of the things that came after that, Trans Europe Express. What an incredible album, um, just so important and they kept going and unlike other bands who just like every year they just automatically kicked out an album they would not come out with an album until it was finished and they felt it was the best that they could do and for about the next 10 years from 1978 to 1988 they were as active as they ever were after that they came out with a few things here and there but just amazing electronica that if you play it or you heard it for the first time today, you it could be contemporary. And very few artists have ever accomplished that. Um, 
I don't think they've done anything new in ages and ages, and I'm not sure if they're ever going to tour again or whether they've done a farewell tour, but their live show remains an impeccable performance. I mean, at one point, uh, well, they had, when they had Wolfgang Fleur and Carl Bartos, along with Florian Schneider and Ralph Hooter, that's considered the classic lineup and they did several albums a uh, computer love um i'm not looking at notes so i can't think of any of the others but there were three or four albums in that era all of which they're just amazing to this very day and important stuff and if you have never heard them that's something else i am very sure if you like electronic music at all you'll appreciate just greatness and that that's what it's all about and another quick kind of movie note uh i've been watching a lot of stuff with friends online uh, my european friends who uh recently visited the u.s uh we'll watch a movie together online off of netflix or disney or paramount or uh, something one of us got from the realm of obtaining and we share that but uh we recently watched a movie i'd never seen and it's cheesy junk god uh, jubanji but one, it was a lot better than I expected. And I'm, I'm discovering I'm a sappier, softy kind of a guy than I was ever willing to admit. I can watch these lacrimal, these weepy, stupid movies and really enjoy them. And it, I don't know. Uh, it, it's almost embarrassing to admit that I'm so sappy, but... Uh, Jumanji is so great and what really got to me uh, I forgot and I've forgotten him over the years I forgot how great and amazing Robin Williams was when he came on and at, at first I didn't recognize him because he's like all with the beard and uh, just caught up in the plot of the movie itself and I, I haven't even thought of Rob and as soon as I saw Robin Williams and recognized him, I really miss Robin Williams. And I never would have thought I would say that because, I don't know, he becomes so mainstream and so just, I, I don't even know the word for it, but I, I'd pretty much become dismissive of him in his later years. Uh, he just made these, you know, yeah, these big Hollywood movies and... We need more people like Robin Williams today. Uh, I am really glad that I saw Jumanji and reconnected with the amazing, talented Robin Williams. I mean, I'd sort of dismissed him somewhere along the lines. Uh, I don't know. Even Mork and Mindy. I, I, I'm old enough to remember when he was doing the stand-up comedy and he first came out. And he was just amazing. And I have to say, I do love him in the uh, not-quite-loved Robert Altman Popeye film, which, with the Harry Nielsen soundtrack, uh, it's it's dated better than one would think and that's another one if you've never seen it or you saw it way back in the day it's well worth seeing again the music the the robin williams is popeye and yeah that robin williams is definitely worth uh checking out again and uh i'm gonna look for robin williams films that i've never seen and nick cage films i've never seen because there are a few of them there's one where he has a pet truffle pig that gets kidnapped or something that i just recently heard about and i i must see that one too um yes yeah, so i i think for uh one session of potential appreciation um we've got enough and there's always more just like uh, Todd Rundgren said in his song, International Feel, There's always more, there is more. Yeah, but uh, 
the next time. And until we meet, of course, I always exhort you to join me and set the controls for the heart of the fun.